Good morning. My name is Father Gregory Maturi. I'm a Dominican priest stationed at St. Dominic's Church in Youngstown. And on behalf of the Dominican Fathers at St. Dominic's in Youngstown, on behalf, on behalf of the Pauline Fathers here at St. Paul's Monastery, I wish you all a blessed Sunday, a blessed Labor Day weekend, a blessed time at the Canfield Fair. One of the most difficult things that we do as Christians is point out sin. I say it's difficult to point out sin because, well, there are many reasons, but one reason is that people are easily offended by criticism. And it's very difficult to point out sin in such a way that the person will actually accept it. Most people do not take criticism well. And moral criticism is even more difficult. Still, the Lord makes it clear to the prophet Ezekiel in today's first reading that we need to point out sin. Otherwise, our own soul is in jeopardy. The trick is to do it in such a way so as to encourage the person actually to turn away from sin and not discourage him. The reason we find it difficult, I believe, to take criticism is, as today's psalmist points out, hardness of heart. We immediately become defensive when someone accuses us of sin. We instinctually harden our hearts when we receive moral criticism. But the psalmist, today's psalmist exhorts us, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. How do we avoid hardness of heart when we receive criticism? Well, I think today's psalmist gives us the answer to that question as well. When the psalmist says, Sing joyfully to the Lord. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Bow down in worship. Kneel before the Lord our Maker. These are the proper responses when we receive criticism. These things soften our hearts. They make us grow in humility. And we do all these things here at Mass, at the Eucharist. Here in the Eucharist, here at Mass, we sing joyfully to the Lord. We come into his presence with thanksgiving. We bow down in worship. We kneel before the Lord our Maker. In this way, the Eucharist fulfills the words of today's psalmist. The grace of the Eucharist softens our hearts so that when we hear the Lord's voice telling us of sin, we do not harden our hearts. The grace of the Eucharist helps us to accept humbly moral criticism. And it also helps us to know how to express ourselves when pointing out sin, such as the grace of the Eucharist. But why is it so important for us Christians to point out sin? Because sin diminishes our ability to love. St. Paul explains this truth in today's second reading when he says to the Romans, he basically explains to the Romans that sin contradicts love. And so he concludes, St. Paul concludes in today's second reading, love fulfills the law. In other words, what St. Paul is saying is this, any action against the commandments is an action against love. The one who truly loves then naturally keeps the commandments, for they are nothing other than practical aspects of love. The commandments are simply ten rules of love. But do the Ten Commandments address all aspects of love? Do they describe all sins? No. 
there are other aspects of love. There are other sins that contradict love. So how do we know what these other sins are? How do we know what is a sin and what is not a sin? Well, I think Jesus gives us the answer to that question in today's Gospel. The Church teaches us what is sin. Recall the words of Jesus in today's Gospel that I just read. If your brother sins against you, go, him, go and tell him his fault. If he listens to you, you have one over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. The church teaches us what is sin. And that's because the church remains, as Jesus says, the final arbiter of moral rectitude. Those who remain, and the warning is clear, those who remain so obstinate, so hard of heart, as not to respect the church's teaching about sin, lack the ability to discern right and wrong in many cases. For this reason, we need to know and understand the teaching of the church with regards to sin and the moral life. And that means we need to study the catechism of the Catholic Church. The catechism of the Catholic Church. I imagine that most of you have looked through the catechism of the Catholic Church. Well, if you haven't, now's a good time to start. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is very important for us Catholics to read, to know our faith, to understand sin, and to understand how to turn away from sin and how to love. The Catechism of the Catholic Church dedicates one quarter of its contents to a reflection on the moral life. As you know, there are four sections to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The first section is on the Creed, the second section is on the Sacraments, the third section is on the moral life, and the fourth section is on prayer. And the Church, <clears throat> specifically, there's a reason the Church made that arrangement, that the section on the moral life would follow the section on the sacraments and precede the section on prayer. Why? Why did the church do it that way? Why? Because the, the moral life follows upon the grace of the sacraments, which make it possible in the first place. And the moral life inevitably leads to and remains indispensable for a fruitful life of prayer. One, for, because one cannot at the same time ignore God in one's actions and hope to engage with him in a fruitful discussion. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that the moral life, our moral life as Christians, has as its source faith in God who reveals his love to us. The moral life is nothing else than a response to God's love, to God who has first loved us. The moral life includes hope hope in the forgiveness of our sins, that by his death and resurrection on the cross, Christ has opened to us the forgiveness of sin. We point out sin then, we Christians point out sin, one of the most difficult things we do. We point out sin not to condemn, but to help grow in love. For only those who will turn away from sin may enjoy the fullness of God's love, enjoy the life of heaven, 
the love that never ends.